This is Vern Benham Grimsley on campus. Did you have another question? Excuse me? Uh, did you have another question? You were saying, how does a person experience this? I want to know how I can experience it. How you can experience God this way? By simple faith. Just daring to believe. I believe in some sort of God. I believe in something greater than man, some spiritual thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, I believe there was some sort of person that was here at one time that everybody wrote about, but... All you really have to do is dare to accept this. The fundamental teaching of Jesus about God is, first of all, of course, that he's just and he's the creator and all this, but most importantly, that he really does love you. And if you can dare to accept this infinite love, then there's a whole new understanding in life in believing that. Well, I just hope I can, my life can change. It will, brother. Well, it can. It can. <laughs> I don't know if I like the idea of the separation of spiritual and physical. I mean, it just doesn't feel right somehow. Uh, and I don't know if I... Oh, something even more than that. The separation of creation and creator. You know, there was God, and then he created the universe. Seems to feel a lot nicer that God and universe and laws of nature are all sort of bound into the same thing somehow. I don't know, that's purely... Uh, I do believe God is a unified deity, that he's not schizoid in some sense, as some people would almost portray him to be. For instance, one doctrine would have it that God's mercy is pitted against his justice, and he has a terrible time deciding whether or not he's going to forgive somebody. I, I believe... I don't like that at all. That, I don't like that. Well, this is a philosophic assault on the unity of God, really. I think this is contradictory to the idea of a God, to the concept and the teaching of a God who is unified. If we have God's mercy and his justice at war continually within himself, it seems to me that if God is great and he is loving and he is infinite, he can forgive a person, <laughs> he can forgive a person right then and there if he wants to. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, I had a, had a teacher who taught um, a class of mine, and he said that, well, he was trying to just, just prove God, you know. He said that the whole concept of justice is all mixed up because, because he felt that you know the uh, Christians taught that if 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 you do A, you know something A, you'll go to hell, and you and you, and you, you do B and you go to heaven, and but uh, if you if you if you knew that you would uh, go do A and go to hell and do B and go to heaven, you you wouldn't you wouldn't do A, you 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 do B, and if you and if you if you went ahead and did A, then you really didn't know. What, 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 what it meant to go to hell, you know? And so he said that uh, a, a just God can't send a person to hell for, for not knowing, you know, right, right from wrong. And he, and he, and he can't, and if, and if they knew, that they, they, would, they would always do right, you know? The basic teaching about God on this, I think, is that he is just, but he is merciful and loving as well, and together, justice and mercy would constitute what we might call fairness. That God is really fair. He understands everything in the motivational background, the uprearing, the culture, and so forth, of every individual to the extent that he's really able to comprehend what leads a person into his wrong behavior, if it be wrong behavior, well, into his... Send anybody to hell. You know, if, if the guy, there's, there's going to be a reason for anything the guy does, you know, what, what prevents you from saying that everybody's got some kind of an emotional hang-up in their background that's going to cause him to do something? Well, this is the very point of saying that God is merciful, as well as being just, that he does comprehend these, and I think a lot of times, you know, people have decided some of the most peculiar bases for consigning other people in their theologies to eternal punishment, even to the point of, for example, where a hemline falls and playing solitaire or old maid card games of this sort. I've known people who literally believe this was some sort of reason for eternal punishment. This is the whole crucial point of saying that God is infinitely wise, he is merciful as well as just, that he really does comprehend this and that many of our ideas about why God would punish a person I think are extremely contradictory to what Jesus said, that God is a loving father. 152 times in the New Testament he said that. Do you believe that only through Christ one can get to God? What about the Mohammeds and the Buddhists and so on? I believe that if a person is a Mohammedan, a Zoroastrian, a Buddhist, whatever, if he spiritually begins seeking with all of his heart, he's going to find. I think that rule or that statement of Jesus, seek and you will find, applies to people anywhere. I agree. I think that's true. Yeah. The whole idea of God being the father of this planet, this whole family of God, <laughs> and the brotherhood of man beneath the fatherhood of God, are founded on the concepts of God really being understanding and compassionate, not the sort of judge who arbitrarily goes around condemning people right and left just on the basis of whether or not they have so many black marks in his big black book or whether they got a gold star this week before they died, but rather a God who is really 
intimately aware with the motivations of his sons and daughters. You think so? Yes, just about exactly what I keep saying, you know, like if people love themselves and they can love other people, then God is within, and you just go around loving everybody and you can respect them for what they believe because you love them as being people and God is within them. As Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. And secondly, he did say, one ought to love his neighbor as himself. Love your neighbor as yourself, which presupposes that you love yourself, that you have a sane and healthy self-respect. All my life, and he just goes around condemning people for what they believe, and it's not right. Because if you love yourself, God is within you, and you love everyone, no matter what they believe. A person does have to have self-respect along this line. Any other question? Yes. Well, if so many people believe in God and believe in love, then why don't they, instead of killing their brother, love their brother? I don't think all that many people really do believe this. It seems to me that a lot of people have given lip service to it, and we print on our money in God we trust. Well, in fact, we trust in the money, <laughs> let's face it, let's be honest. And outward, ritualistic kind of acknowledgement of spiritual values. But finally, the number of people who are really committed to the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, to serving God and loving God, would be a very, very small minority, I think. I believe that the church going is not a necessary part of believing in God. I think that God is within yourself. Jesus Christ, God, I'm Jewish to begin with, so I, yes. Jesus Christ doesn't form any large facet. But God is within yourself, and you have to find God within yourself. You cannot find it in the church. It's found As a matter of fact, it's interesting that in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul at one point says that each one of us is a temple of God. We are temples in that sense, and we have this divine spirit and potential available to us if we will draw upon it. Now, it's a matter then of making that choice to begin to live spiritually and seek the Father's will and guidance and a sense of wisdom and power for daily life. That's true, like we're supposed to love ourselves, our bodies, and everyone else because they're, the, they're made of the same thing. As a matter of fact, psychiatrists say that one of the major problems of mental illness and one of the causes of it is a sense of guilt, of hating self. Instead of having a sane and reasonable kind of self-respect and being able to see oneself, for example, I think to see oneself as a son or daughter of God and of infinite value, spiritually with a fragment of infinity of God himself within oneself is a joyous way to live. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Hey, what's all this stuff about Jesus? What's all the stuff about Jesus? He was teaching about peace and love and that we can live as brothers and in friendship on this earth. Does that sound good? But what brought up the idea? What brought up the idea of Jesus? You should understand maybe better than anybody, because Jesus one time said, he called a child into a crowd, and he said, if you want to become a member of the kingdom of God, you have to become as that little child. He said, just trust God the way a little child trusts his parents, and that's what joy is. You being a child, do you understand that? Uh-huh. Trust God the way you trust your parents, yes? What people need now most is freedom, understanding, and love, and these people shouting on the corners, professing to be presenting Jesus or love or whatever are not offering love or understanding or peace they are offering loud voices you know threats there, of yeah. hell the and damnation the kind of freedom which people need preeminently I think is inward and psychological the American your soul. What? through your soul inner, inner the American Psychiatric Association published some statistics not long ago that 70 percent of all medical practice is now concerned with mental and emotional disturbances Correct. people having feelings of guilt unworthiness not knowing who they are and yet real religion which is a faith producing joy producing phenomenon as Jesus taught it can bring about all this true true it can and the thing is well, what's happening is people have been you know make doing so many wrong things they're now you know making tremendous mistakes and I think maybe eventually will destroy themselves and the only way to find God is I, I, I want to say through yourself but not in the way of look into yourself turn into yourself but in the know yourself and you know shall know God it was written know thyself presume not the man uh, who'd you call him? Presume not God to scan. Proper study, study of, of mankind, mankind is man. <laughs> That's Alexander Pope who wrote that couplet, as I recall. Very wise, very wise. Is, is that and astral projection? <laughs> no. It's also Perfect. what was written on the Temple of Delphi. Right. Know yourself. And this is what Socrates said. But I think the way to know oneself really is to know one's God. That man has to know this spiritual aspect okay. of himself or he doesn't really comprehend no, 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 no. his spiritual reason self. Reason this, reason this. Know yourself, your spirit, your body, and your mind perfectly. And since we are made in the image of God, if you know your body perfectly and your mind perfectly, then you shall know God's image and God's mind. And if you know your spirit perfectly, since we are all part of God, therefore you shall know God perfectly. I think man is created in the image of God spiritually, not physically. In other words, that God doesn't have two eyes and a nose and mouth very and so forth. Very wise, very true, very true. And that in God man's soul. never be that ugly, never. <laughs> Think of it. What I was thinking is that, you know, like, God is not a hateful God. You know, he doesn't have to be. It's only if you want to be. It's only your head, you know. There is no... I think God is loving and he's the father of all men. 
I wouldn't say the father because that's a patriarchal term. I, I speak of. I think that it's a meaningful term because everybody has a father. If you compare God only to some theory, for instance, in physics or chemistry, not everybody knows physics and chemistry, but everybody has a father. God can be best understood through physics and chemistry. A basic. I think God can best be understood through the family analogy because everybody has a father, and that's why the fatherhood of God and brotherhood of man are important. That leads to misunderstanding, so that really does. Why does it lead to misunderstanding? Because people tend to think, you know, they get too much into egos. Some of the people here on campus do. Like, the thing is, God is not a he or she or an it. God is. God. You know, God is God. It is everywhere. It the is reason for calling God a he is otherwise one completely robs God of personality. And you have a deity no with whom? God has no personality. Let me say why I think God has personality. The highest realities we know in human life are personal realities such as friendship and fellowship and love. A non-personal being cannot engage in love, fellowship, friendship, and all these sorts of things. Therefore, if the highest of our realities are personal realities, God, if he's the highest being, must be the source of this and must be personal himself. You've been listening to On Campus, a non-sectarian, non-denominational public affairs presentation. For free printed transcripts, write to Box 347, Berkeley, California, 94701 and ask for the booklet Questions University Students Ask. It deals with such issues as science versus religion. How might a person define God? And to what extent is religion relevant in a scientific technological age? The title of that free booklet, once again, Questions University Students Ask. The mailing address, Box 347, Berkeley, California, 94701. I've also written Finding God, Getting to Know God, and Growing Spiritually. About the processes of inward discovery, the new power and purposeful resource inherent in living by faith. And another free piece of literature is Freedom from Fear. The mailing address box 347, Berkeley, California. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international network of stations, let me spell out that mailing address once again. Box 347, Berkeley, B-E-R-K-E-L-E-Y, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 94701. USA. When you write, please send us the call letters of the radio station over which you heard this international broadcast. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley, reminding you to tune in again next time over this same station for On Campus. And may God's will be done by you. Good day.